sharp you. Choose the razor that is built for you. Light and regular and heavy. Hey, slick shave already, dear. Good evening, this is Jimmy Powers welcoming you to another Friday night boxing match telecast for your entertainment by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. Our headliner tonight is a 10-round featherweight bout between Hogan Kid Bassey, the world champion from Nigeria, and Carmela Costa of Brooklyn, New York. Gillette telecast the major boxing event of the week every Friday night and such attractions as the World's Invitational Match Game Bowling Championships, Blue and Gray Football Game, Rose Bowl Game, Kentucky Derby, All-Star Baseball Game, and the World Series. This is our thanks to you for using Gillette products. We're waiting for the decision now on the Al Teasy, uh, Wally Livingston bout. Teasy is from the east side. Livingston is from Trenton, New Jersey. Judge Leo Brainbaum has a 3-2. One even favor of White Trunks, Livingston. Referee Joe Pushkow scores a 4-2, Livingston. And the other judge, Bill Recht, has a 5 to 1 TC. Winner by majority vote, Wally Livingston, White Hot. Well, the crowd didn't like that decision, which was a split decision. Wally Livingston of Trenton, New Jersey, who was given only one round on Judge Bill Recht's card, nevertheless caught the eye of the other two officials, and he wins a split decision over Al Teasy. Mike Spataro of the Bronx, decision Chico Velez of Brooklyn, and Tommy Kelly of Long Island City, and Bert Rays of Harlem, two very fine boxers, boxed a draw. Kelly and Rays a draw, Spataro decision Velez, and Livingston Thanks decision Teasy. The next two attractions here in the garden, two weeks from tonight, Friday, November the 14th, light heavyweight contenders Tony Anthony and Sonny Ray meet in the feature attraction. And on Friday, November the 28th, heavyweights will be featured Mike T. John and Willie Vestmanoff. Here comes one of the leading contenders for the heavyweight title, Nino Valdez. Let's give him a hand, Nino Valdez. Right behind him, just defeated the lightweight champion of England, Dave Charnley, here he is, New York's own Carlos Ortiz, Carlos Ortiz. And also in the audience, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most colorful of all heavyweight champions, the popular Maxi Bear. Come on up, popular Maxi Bear.
Don't you boys got your instruction at the New York State Athletic Commission this afternoon? I just want to caution you to break clean and clinches. I tell you to step back and want you to step back yourself. The event of a knockdown, the man scoring the knockdown is on a neutral corner. The man knocked down must take an eight count. Shake hands down, good luck to both of you. Uh, this is scored under the round system in New York. The weather in New York City tonight is fair, 58 degrees, humidity 37%. Bassey in the left corner is the world champion making his first appearance in the garden, and of course he is the favorite. This is a non-title 10-rounder. in the black trunks. Excellent boxer, holds his gloves high. Sometimes has them in a manner of pushing them far up above his head, the top of his head. to stick and move very fast afoot. champion in black is one of the shortest in the history of the division. He's only 5-3. One minute to the end of round one. That's the featherweight champion Bassey in black, Costa in white, and this is your Gillette Cavalcade of Sports coming your way from Madison Square Garden. to their weights, 127 pounds. These are eight ounce gloves, so they loam as large as pillows. Ten seconds to the end of round one. That's the end of round one. 79 cents. Stiffer punchers scored 19 knockouts and 52 victories. Cost of three knockouts and uh, 33 victories.
the body occasionally to slow this will of the wisp down. Swung so high with a left hook, he almost kicked uh, Costa in the tail on the pivot. Occasionally switches to a right hand stance or a left hand uh, stance. Beautiful left hook. Surprise, Bassey. <laughs> Good stinging left hook to the chops by Costa. That's Costa's best punch. Let's take a look at Hogan Bassey. You know, his real name is O.K.O.N. Bassey Asuko, and because the phonetic difference, the English equivalent, he took the name Hogan. That's how he got it. His real name is O.K.O.N. He became champion in 57 when he stopped Sharif Hamia in Paris in 10 rounds, two months after Bassey made his American start at Washington against Miguel Barrios on one of our Gillette Cavalcades of Sports. Um, it was a one-point decision by Judge Arthur Idala when referee and another judge split that lost for Costa his chance to face Bassey instead of Barrios that night. And now Bassey is the champ, and Costa gets a chance, but only in this over-the-weight uh, match. He became interested in boxing while attending school in Lagos, the Nigerian capital. A friend of him had, a jo had him join a boys' club uh, founded by an official of Coal Storage Limited, because you know coal storage is very important in Africa. He turned professional at 16, and the year he won the flyweight title while still a schoolboy. Next was the bantamweight title. And then he went to Liverpool, and he came under the management of George Biddles, a pub keeper who was known as George High Diddle Biddles, and well-known and well-liked in England, English boxing circles. Bassey won 52, lost 10, had 63 fights, 26 years old. Last fight, September the 20th, knocked out Willie Pep in Boston. Bassey has lost only two fights. left counter. One left hook calls for another left hook in return. Good snappy shots. They're using up a lot of ring as the phrase goes. Constant motion. One minute to the end of round three. Your Gillette Cavalcade of Sports. Carmela Costa and White, the featherweight champion of the world, Hogan Bassey, his opponent.
timed right hand lead. A perfect right, beautifully timed. There was no mandatory eight count on that. He got up at about the count of three. He took the eight count, uh, Lester Bromberg tells me. Hold everything, hold everything. The bell is going to ring, the bell saved him. That's Dr. Schiff going into a, a check. Carmel Acosta, what started the whole thing was a right hand lead, a punch to the chin. A crisp, fast shot that caught Costa with his guard down, and he slumped over to his right, pivoted around, got up. The count went to eight. I thought it only went to three. Then he was still staggering when he was slammed into the ropes. He sank to the bottom strand of the ropes on the right, and the timekeeper again counted. You can hear the timekeeper in the confusion. A terrifically exciting finish to that round, and then the bell saved him as he was on his feet at the count of nine at the end of round three. proud of his championship, determined to make a good showing here in his garden start. Really gunning for a knockout. Packs a lot of power in that five foot three body. 127 pounds. Twenty-four years old. Notice that little move of Bassey's. Uh, he faints with his left, and then bangs in a right, and that's what caught uh, Costa. He fell for the faint. One minute to the end of round four. Bassey had his man down twice in round three. Bassey gets the rosin dust cleaned off his gloves. That's why the referee does that, because if he gets in the eye of a, an opponent, it can cause serious damage to a fluid-covered eyeball. seconds to the end of round four.
Pretty workmanlike stiff puncher, this featherweight champion on display here. Hogan Bassey in black, Carmel Acosta, very game, and after being knocked down, came back and started trading with the champ the way he is now. in there, gamely fighting back. so short has a sort of a spring-like wiry build and can lash out with terrific speed. Like a tightly coiled spring. Full of fire. You can see him banging his gloves together. of punching power. Take a look at Carmel Acosta, a very handsome boy called Chubby, 24 years old. Uh, last time he was here, he dropped a one-point decision to Miguel Barrios in the featherweight title eliminations. He's had a year in the Army, his, for, where his first child, a daughter, was born recently for him and his wife, Tina. He was born in Brooklyn, the son of Joseph and Conchetta Acosta. His father is caretaker with the New York Water Department. He attended New Utrecht High and then switched to Brooklyn Automotive graduated as a mechanic, started fighting in the Police Athletic League at 13 when he weighed 90 pounds. He was one of New York's best amateurs in 51 and 52. He collects records. He's currently going to school to be a draftsman, trained by Jerry Salika, cousin of the former bantamweight champion, Lou Salika. He's managed by Steve Paris, won 33 of 45, lost only seven and boxed five draws. Carmel Acosta in the right corner and the white trunks, who has battle back after a, a two knockdown third round.
on Mark. minute to the end of round six here on your Gillette Cavalcade of Sports coming your way from Madison Square Garden tonight featuring the featherweight champion of the world this boy in the black trunks is the best man in the world at his weight if you know anybody that thinks he can beat him he can make a lot of money seconds to the end of round six. <laughs> That's the end of round six. Dancing movement uh, explains why a lot of boxers skip the rope to uh, condition their legs. Certainly can tire you out to keep that up for 10 rounds. He's covering most of the mileage on the outside of the circle. One minute to go in the round. Costa battling gamely to avoid a knockout. crowd is really rooting for this underdog here who's been escaping knockouts uh, through sheer courage and uh, good condition. Listen to that applause for Carmela Costa. Next Friday, your Gillette Cavalcade of Sports moves to Syracuse where Norman Rothschild promotes Kenny Lane versus Laurie Godie. 
Lane, unbeaten in 19 until he ran into Joe Brown, is fresh from a victory over Orlando Zulueta in Muskegon, Michigan, his hometown. He lost only 6 of 59 against the top men in the trade. Godi, the Algerian from Paris, is the former French lightweight champion. He, too, has lost only six fights out of 55. So next Friday from the War Memorial Auditorium in Syracuse, it will be a 10-rounder featuring Kenny Lane versus Laurie Godi on the Gillette Cavalcade of Sports. But right now we have a very thrilling fight. It shows you that a one-sided fight can still be dramatic. Uh, Carmela Costa has been using all the guile and all the condition of his legs to avoid being pinned into a, or being boxed into a corner to become a stationary target for the dynamic punching Kid Bassey in black. One minute to the end of round eight. seconds to the end of round eight. That's the end of round eight. The skip even right over butter just 249 at stores everywhere. These two final rounds uh, are really the toughest for a boy that's had two knockdowns and has been traveling as fast and using up as much ring as Costa. Also, the two knockdowns might have sapped his strength to a certain extent, but he's still in there with a blazing heart fighting back as the featherweight champion of the world, Hogan Bassey in black.
Lee trying to take his man out with one punch. And Costa banging away, jabbing and hooking, trying to keep him off balance. And anticipate a lead. move where you hook to the head and try to move around behind your opponent's hip was a Willie Pep move, but it didn't help Willie. Willie was knocked out by Bassett in round nine. the champ back to his corner. This is his first appearance, of course, and the last man that faced him, Willie Pep, uh, was uh, finished in nine rounds. Now, he's a good stiff puncher. He, of his 52 fights, he scored 19 uh, knockouts. He uh, has been working in uh, Lagos as a civilian clerk in the Army Ordnance Corps, and he's married to an English girl of West African descent, and he's the proud parents. He and his wife, Maria, are the proud parents of two boys. While he has lost a total of 10 fights, he, in the last five years, he's only dropped two. He, uh, here's his opponent, Costa. Costa, of course, is two years younger, but has had that year in the Army. And uh, you accumulate a little uh, rust, although he, his legwork is pretty good tonight. And he's been moving around at a good stiff pace for these last nine rounds. That's Steve Paris, his handler, giving him some last-minute advice, and here we go into round 10, and in the earlier part of the fight, few anticipated it would go this far. Costa was down for two knockdowns in round three. as you can hear in the background, is openly rooting for the underdog who put up such a game uh, exhibition to finish on his feet, which will be a sort of a moral victory. Bassey is still trying his best. He's throwing those thunderbolts. One minute of the last round has gone by. Two minutes to go here. A minute and a half to go. trading furiously right above our microphone here. Listen to that crowd applaud. Sixty seconds left. Very important sixty seconds to Costa. Fifty seconds. champion still stalking his man 30 seconds
They towel off Costa. And the seconds congratulate him for a gallant showing. The champ is over in his corner being sponged off. And we'll have the decision in just a moment. Before we find out who gets the nod tonight, let me tell you exactly why the Gillette Super Speed is the one razor just right for you. It's because no matter what combination of skin and beard you have, there's a Gillette Super Speed, light, regular, or heavy, that's precisely engineered to your exact requirements. The light is designed with minimum blade edge exposure, angle, and weight for men with lighter beards. The regular is for men with average ballots are being, cards are being checked and we'll have the decision right now from Johnny Addy. Judge Bill Rex has it 5-4 and 1 even. Ooh. Referee Alvaro 6-3 1 even. Leo Brainbaum, the judge has it 8-2 to two, all in favor of Bassey. Winner by unanimous decision Hogan Bassey. Bill Reck, five and four, Birnbaum, eight and two, and uh, Burrell, six and three. Hogan Bassey, the champion, making his first appearance in Madison Square Garden, a winning one with a victory over a game, Carmela Costa, and an exciting fight which shows that even a one-sided fight as it was on one card here, eight and two, can still be an interesting one. Carmela Costa got back from a two-knockdown third round and finished on his feet. There's the champion, Hogan Kid Bassey from Nigeria, Africa. Next week from Syracuse, Gillette presents a 10-round lightweight.